Well, <clears throat> Bruno Gimarez, positive talks to Arsenal have been held. And I tell you, this story is going to hate to come in from this guy who has never going to hate to miss out on anything at Arsenal. He has never going to hate to hit a miss. Everything he hits is a target when it comes to the side of Arsenal. Smash like button, comment and share. If you're totally watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. Rock and David is my name and hope you guys are really having fun and hope everything is really moving on to the right direction that you want it. This is the story that is coming in to you at any time from now. 25th of May, Bruno Gimarez positive talks to Arsenal held and I know very many Arsenal fans are really just excited about this Brazilian who is just I think 25 years of age playing at Man City sorry playing at less um playing at Newcastle wanted by very many teams Barcelona Man City Liverpool Manchester United and Arsenal who is really gonna win this race and I think the news comes in through at the right time when Arsenal is being given green light in here that the talks are heading into the right direction. Kylian Mbappe officially putting pen to paper to say to it that he goes ahead obviously join Real Madrid and Mauricio Pochettino questioning Fernando all ends of Hernandez was one of the reasons as to why he was really shown the exit door from from the side of um from the side of Chelsea and many more stories are still hanging out all coming in through from the media. We thank God for the gift of life, the Muslims, Baraklav Hikum, and we're here to bring you this story of Bruno Gimares. I think it's not really rocket science that this guy is linked to Arsenal and there is concrete interest that Arsenal want to sign Bruno Gimares. Now, we've gone ahead to get a story coming in through from... Uh, Coming in through from Team News and Tick, and um, he calls himself Team News and Ticks. This guy is that fly on the wall, walls of Arsenal, huh? at the train ground uh, in Edwards' office, and everyone that is responsible for transfers at Arsenal and news coming in through from the train ground of Arsenal. He has never gone ahead to hit a miss. If you've been following this channel long enough ever since we kickstarted off in 2020, you now know that this guy is the right guy to really listen to each and every time a story comes in through concerning the side of Arsenal. And that is the man, Team News and Ticks. He has told us that on Arsenal's pursuit of Bruno Guimarães, he said, I was told within the last couple of days that there has been positive conversations. I'm not saying it's done or it's anywhere close to be done, but the club are feeling positive on it, is what I was told. Now, <coughs> Arsenal. Arsenal are really doing exactly like I really thought. Because last season, they went ahead to buy a player of £100 million. And I promise you this time, they might not even go for one, but they might go for two players that cost that worth. That is £100 million. Because when you look at Bruno Gimares, He's going to have to prove himself in the Premier League. Ever since he came in through the right transfer window, I think of, um, it was 2021. I think it was 2022, right? He never, he has never going to have to look back. His stats are really amazing. And I think I would prefer him at Arsenal to, um, to, to Douglas Lewis. <clears throat> I know Douglas Lewis has gone ahead to put in numbers, but I tell you what, Bruno Gimares offers a lot. His intensity, the way he shields the back four, he scores goals, and this time round, this season, he had 37 games played. Just he missed out on one game, and I know why he missed out on it. It was because he had accumulated five yellow cards, and those were seven, seven goals and eight assists. That is Bruno Gimares for you. Now, if you look at Arsenal and you look at Declan Rice, I think you would love to be having two workaholic players, you know, two workaholic players, you know, into your midfield. And 
Bruno Gimares ticks that box and the other guy ticks that box. But there is something else that Bruno Fernandes, that Bruno Gimares gets you, as I've always told you, that Bruno Gimares is a more talented player than this guy, than Declan Rice. Then Declan Rice is a talented player, but I tell you, the talent of Bruno Gimares exceeds a certain level of Declan Rice. There is that class, there is that natural born talent in him as a Brazilian and he is really ready for the big stage. To show you that he's really big ready, he's that kind of player that is press resistant, he can do anything that you want and I think Mikel Ateta, while playing teams like Man City, he doesn't really get along with them head to head because he needs a player in the midfield to obviously get hold of that ball with physicality. A question will come in through that Rokani. But Arsenal have Jorginho. <clears throat> Jorginho lacks that physical attribute. You know, Jorginho is good holding that ball, but the physicality, he might be really um he might be really pressed with energy like shoulder to shoulder but holes he can't really handle. But Bruno Gimares has shown us that he's even hard you know, in tackles, and he can shield himself well, and I think in games like those of Man City, he can obviously try to go head-on with the side of Man City in that midfield. And I tell you, if Arsenal gets in Bruno Gimares, their midfield will obviously be better than that of Man City, because Bruno Gimares at Arsenal, he'll put in almost the same performances like Rodri. You get Declan Rice will continue to play as a number eight, of Arsenal and will be playing that role of Grant Tijaka that he used to do. And I tell you, in that role, he can really get Arsenal like 15 goals and 15 assists in Declan Rice. Then you put on Martin Odegaard, he will be really great. And for Man City, they'll be having, um, I think, Douglas Luiz, they'll be having um, uh, Rodri and Kevin De Bruyne. I tell you, Arsenal have the best number 10 in the world, that is Martin Odegaard. In Bruno Gimares, I tell you, he'll be cancelling himself out with Rodri. Now for Declan Rice in that midfield, I tell you, he's going to get you a lot when he's playing as a number 8. So, that's what is crossing my mind. If there are positive talks held to see to it that this guy comes into the club of Arsenal, that is really great. And it shows you that Arsenal have gone ahead to obviously move on from Douglas Luiz to Bruno Gimares, I tell you. Why is it that right now we are hearing it from the close sources coming in from Arsenal that Arsenal have gone ahead to hold what we call positive talks with Bruno Gimares? Why isn't it with the side of Douglas Luiz? You know? So it obviously trains out to be that maybe Arsenal have decided to sign that 100 million pound player that is Bruno Gimares. And you all know that. His buyout clause is open in the last week of May that we are into to the last week of June, meaning that from now up to 30th of June, the buyout clause will be open of 100 million pounds. And Arsenal have decided to go in for a player that has a specific buyout clause. For Aston Villa, you go there for Douglas Lewis, they might call in for 120 million pounds, though. Uh, two or three months back, they reported that they wanted 105, but they might even call in for more. And Arsenal knows to it that it's gonna be a heated, a heat heated up competition between them and Man City on Bruno Gimares and Douglas Lewis. But where do they have an edge? I think they have an edge on Bruno Gimares because they have the exact amount of money to set it that they really sign this player. And they have an age on convincing Bruno Gimares why Edu is a Brazilian. And we've gone ahead to note it that he has gone ahead to really bring in very many Brazilians at the side of... He has gone ahead to bring in very many Brazilians at the side of Arsenal. And he has gone ahead to obviously give them a very good go. And they've gone ahead to put in a very huge shift in the mix. So, <coughs> the other factor is... Arsenal has very many Brazilian players, Gabriel Magales, Martinelli, and Gabriel Jesus. And right now, they're going to be going into the Copa America. Arsenal is going to be having two representatives, Martinelli and Gabriel Magales, meaning that those two can act as agents to convince the lad. And when you ask Man City,
do they have any Brazilian in their squad? The answer is yes, and that is Ederson Molares. But I tell you, with the way Arsenal plays, you'd love to see to it that he go that side. I tell you, Arsenal is a more convincing side. One, their manager is here to stay, but for Man City, Pep Guardiola's contract is running out in 2025. You know, and it's very hard to convince a player that. Pep Guardiola is going to be here in 2025. Though the assurance is there, but players want assurance that he's really on paper signed and dusted. You understand? It's not like this one-off that will come in through and really say, all right, we have that player and he's really going to be doing the needful. No. They want that serious assurance that a man is tied onto a longer contract. And that's why Arsenal is negotiating a longer contract with Mikel Ateta. So I think the factors at play <coughs> give Arsenal a very huge age to see that they sign Bruno Gimarez. But positive news are really there. But it's not close and it's not yet done. But the news is really positive. Very positive stories coming in through of Bruno Gimarez linking him to the side of Arsenal. And you obviously feel entitled that on either Douglas Lewis or Bruno Gimarez, one is coming to Arsenal. One of those will be playing for Arsenal, or both will be playing for Arsenal, or one will be playing for Man City and the other will be playing for Arsenal. So those are the um, situations that we expect to emerge from the situation of these two players wanted by Arsenal. We go to the other guy. He goes by the names of uh, Kylian Mbappe, and the story has been reported to us through... Um, through La Raison coming in from France, Kylian Mbappe has officially signed the paperwork and bought his house in Madrid for 18 million euros. He'll be neighbors with Sergio Ramos and live close to Real Madrid Sports City. That is it. So, Kylian Mbappe, preparations to joining Real Madrid are really now done because the moment you put that pen to paper, it's a confirmation that all is going to go on well with you. But um, <clears throat> he's this kind of player who is going to go to the Euros. And I think Madrid will plan to unveil him as their player. Mm, I think after the Euros. Because the transfer window officially opens on the 14th. And that's when the Euros really start. Meaning that Kylian Mbappe is going to be with the French national team for, for all that time. And there is no way they'll give him a go to go and really skip out of a training session so for the side of um for the side of um, what is it called for the side of real madrid it doesn't make sense for them to obviously unveil Kylian Mbappe when the euros are really going on i think the best thing to do is <laughs> unveil Kylian Mbappe after the euros are done you know before they head out to to <clears throat> To the US, where they're going to be playing their preseason from, get Kylian Mbappe in, right? After getting Kylian Mbappe in, unveil him like um, like a week after the Euros. You never know, he might come in with the momentum because France are one of the favorites to lift the league, sorry, the Euros of 2024. They're going to be held in Germany starting 14th next month. That is Kylian Mbappe for you. So a lot is in movement. A lot is happening, and the movement is really huge. And we just can't wait. We just can't wait to see how things are really going to pan out onto Kylian Mbappe. But I think the best plan is that get Kylian Mbappe in, give him that shot number nine, hold it at the Banabo, and I know he's really going to break the record because Ronaldo, I think, still has the record of shot sales at Real Madrid, and for Kylian Mbappe. I tell you, he's going to break the record. And for Madrid, they are going to do, they, they, they'll do anything possible to see that this man comes in at a high. And what high are we talking about? Lifting the Euros. If he comes in through, when I was going to hit to lift the Euros, you know, name the player of the tournament. Maybe when he's the top scorer of the tournament, I tell you, Madrid will give Madrid a very huge engine. And if I told you, ask Fiorentino Perez on Spain, and France, who do you want to win the Euros? He will tell you, I would go Spain, I would go France anyway, because he knows what it means to really get in Kylian Mbappe. He's going to make short sales a lot. 
I know he can make like three or five million shot sales just on his day of unveiling. He can break the record of Cristiano Ronaldo. And I tell you, in just one day, when his jerseys go into the different stores of, um, I think they're dressed by Adidas, those kits will obviously get done. Kylian Mbappe, even in my country, I've gone hate to see him being loved by women. You know, at the moment a woman falls in love with you, you just know that you are the really next big thing. And Kylian Mbappe might be one of those footballers who are really active to hit um, one billion dollar of net worth when they are still actively playing football, according to me. So, Kylian Mbappe, everything is done. Rumors that he was going to buy the house of Sergio Ramos were really refuted. And the fact is, he's going to be staying near Sergio Ramos. That is it. So, thank you very much for watching through. That is it coming in from Bruno Gimarez and um, Kylian Mbappe. Let's climax it with a story coming in from Chelsea. Reasons as to why Pochettino parted ways with the side of Chelsea have gone ahead to come up and we've been told Mauricio Pochettino privately questioned whether Enzo Fernandez was destructive enough to be a number six or creative enough to be a number eight. Now, if we went ahead to question this, then <clears throat> he just got himself got sucked because in the era of Tony Boyle, this is his star. He's the second most expensive signing they've gone ahead to make as the side of Chelsea. They signed him for 106 million pounds from Benfica, and the man who broke his record was none other than Moise Quesido, who came in through at a fee of 116 million pounds, coming in through from Brighton. Now, if you find a player of the caliber of Enzo Fernandez at Chelsea, you can't really question him like that because. He has been <clears throat> thriving everywhere he has been. At River Plate, he was really a jam. He went to Benfica. He was another great player. After that, he moved to Chelsea. And you cannot question him because he's one of those players who really had a very good debut half season because he came in through in the winter transfer window of 2023. And if you're Pochettino and you doubt a player like Enzo Fernandez, then you're going to be shown a way out. Because we all know how good Enzo Fernandez is. Enzo is a very, very good player. Let's all admit. And if you fail to fix him into your team, then your tactics might be really lacking. You get? And these are some of the factors as to why Pochettino went ahead to leave the side of Chelsea. And in the more videos you're going to be throwing up on this channel, we're going to be bringing you more and more and more and more and more and more and more reasons as to why this guy left because they've gone ahead to be flooded everywhere. And you get to know where they're coming in from. They're coming in through from the club of Chelsea. Whether they are right or wrong, but I see no reason as to why a club can come out and obviously um, uh, um, put that onto the name of Pochettino, yet things were not yet done. But I tell you, for Enzo Fernandez, it was a very bad move. Why? Enzo Fernandez, if he's not doing what you want to do, then you as a manager, you are supposed to make him fit into your role because you've gone ahead to see him as a versatile player. He can play as a number six. He can play as a box-to-box -box midfielder. He can also play as a number 10. So you as a manager, it's your role to obviously have him fit well into your squad. He has the intensity, he scores goals, he's press resistant, and he's that kind of midfielder that you always want to have in your team. That is Enzo Fernandez for you. So I think that's what Pochettino went ahead to get wrong. And I tell you what, if you question a player like him, then you are going to really be shown the exit door. Remember, Carl Palmer is another player that Chelsea signed and Pochettino never wanted him, but look at how he has gone ahead to have a debutant season that saw him being named the young player of the season with close to 30 plus goal involvements. That is the guy we are talking about. So, Pochettino really maybe has something that is not really real on him that saw him being shown the exit door. So, guys. I call upon for your reactions into the conversation video about Bruno Gimarez to Arsenal positive talks held, confirmed by the fly on the wall, team news and takes, you know him very well, what do you make about it? And of the two, Douglas Lewis and 
Um, Douglas Luiz and Bruno Gimares, who would you love to see coming through at Arsenal to do the needful? Then, you can as well chip in something concerning Kylian Mbappe, putting pain to paper, and Poch, Enzo Fernandez question. Do you think Poch was really right to question how this boy plays? All that and more into the comment section below. Rock and David remains my name. Good morning. We cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And for the Muslims, may Allah protect you. And we out. Bye-bye.